here in Malta. So the only official thing we had to do here in Malta in the end was to do a fireside chat with Home Keller. Home Keller is this wonderful man, he's like an angel for the music industry, who is German, but he has a foundation here called the Kennett Foundation that he works with, based in Malta. And two years ago I heard about this initiative about trying to bring to life an open database of musical works. And he got in touch with me about how the music makers would author into such a space and help create a verified database of works. And it's very interesting to me because he was somebody, he is somebody outside of the music industry who sees it's so ripe for innovation and kind of an overhaul. It's coming from a political level, it's coming from an ethical level of why we need this. The Kennett Foundation have this initiative called Music Now, and so we were discussing Music Now with the open database of works and the creative passport as how to individual music makers would author into that space. So it's a very exciting project and really, really good to catch up with him. And hopefully he's going to have some good news on the 29th of November. So thank you very much to Home for putting that together. It was a really great evening. We've had Andy Kahn with us, who's this kind of genius designer who's done a lot of my albums in the past. He has this incredible product called Streamliner, which is 3D visualising artwork. And some of you guys might have seen some of my uh, ones of those over the years. He has been putting together a new brand identity for the Creative Passport because we kind of need to separate it from Mycelia because it really is its own thing now. So he's been working on that and I think he's come up with some beautiful things. Oh, that's very nice, Andy. Yesterday, in Malta in my time, not blog time, was uh, the release of the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child album, finally after so long, sitting on my shelf, gathering dust. It's finally out into the world, even though still haven't signed the deal. A little bit awkward, but I hear that's not too odd these days, but it does make me feel a little bit unsettled that we haven't signed the deal. Anyway, it's out there in the world and lots of people are loving it, which is great. Every single Twitter message I've got at the moment is all about the Harry Potter album. Actually, this week I've been doing a lot of press for Harry Potter. I've done Billboard, Vulture, Fader, Rolling Stone, Pottermore and The Guardian. So thank you everyone for those interviews. Um, I think they're all up already, actually, apart from maybe The Guardian one. And on the release day, we found ourselves on a boat out in the Mediterranean. It was wonderful, I actually got to swim in the sea and I really just kind of, just for a moment, soaked in the, soaked in the happiness of finally this album coming out into the world. So before I say goodnight and go, I'm just gonna tell you about another goodnight and go, which is that Ariana Grande sung Goodnight and Go, her version, on, on BBC One. And it was very exciting because we saw lots of people in the audience singing Goodnight and Go, singing the chorus that I wrote. And yeah, it was a lovely, lovely moment. So thank you, Ariana. Thank you for, for singing that song. It's very exciting for me. OK, Goodnight and Go, everyone. Bye from Malta. Next up is... Lisbon, and actually it's Scout's fourth birthday. So we're gonna have a party in Lisbon. Good circles in the cup.